In this video, we are going to see two examples of encryption in SP.NET Core. The first example is going to be a simple one in which we are going to see how to encrypt a plain text and then in the second one we are going to learn how to implement a token validation system in which we can validate a token without having to use a database. Now let's begin by talking about encryption. Encryption is when you want to take a plain text like Felipe, a credit card number or something like that and you want to protect it from unauthorized users by ciphering it, which means that going from plain text to an encrypted version. That encrypted version, if you see it, you cannot decipher what it is about, what it is a simple string like Felipe, what it is a credit card number, or something like that. That is what encryption is. And in SP.NET Core, they make it easy for us to use encryption by using that data protection API, which is what we're going to learn in this video. But before that, if you want to learn how to build minimal APIs using SP.NET Core, buy my Udemy courses today. In these courses, we learn how to make minimal APIs from scratch, whether it is using Entity Framework Core to access the database or by using Dapper in which we use store procedures. In both courses, we create a user system, we do validation, we do deployment and more. Link with a discount to these courses in the description of this video. All right, so let's get back to the tutorial. So we are here in a newly created minimal API. So let's come here. First, we need to activate that data protection API. So for that, let's come here to builder. Let me say builder services at data protection. And with this, we are good to go because we can use the data protection API. Let me delete this code that's here as an example. And let me say map get. I want to do a first example in which we're going to take a simple text like Felipe and we're going to encrypt it. So let me say here encrypt and then in here I will pass as a parameter a data protection provider which is the service that will allow us to create a data protector which is the service that will allow us to actually protect data to actually encrypt data. Let's see that. Data protection provider all right, so let's do this and let me get my protector. So data protection provider, create protector and I have to pass a purpose string. You can think of a purpose string as a value that will allow us to create a new secondary key that will allow us to encrypt our values in a way that is isolated from other data protectors. In this way, we avoid having an attack called token substitution attack, which we're going to see in a future video. For now, let's just say here that the good practice is to always use a different purpose string for each case. So if, for example, you want to do token validation, you use a unique purpose string. And if you want to do account confirmation, then you use another purpose string and so on. So in here, I will say example. Again, this is a simple string. Nothing complicated about that. Now, here I want to do encryption, right? So what I will do is that I will receive a plain text. The plain text is the naked text like Felipe, for example, or a credit card number. So let me say here plain text. And uh, let me put that plain text here as a parameter, plain text, comma. All right. So now let me cipher this text. So let me say here var protected text equal to protector dot protect we use protect to encrypt the text and then we use unprotect to unencrypt the text so let me say here protect and let me pass the plain text and then let me unprotect the text so that we can see that indeed we can unencrypt some text so let me say here unprotected text equal to protector dot unprotect and then protected text. Now, just in case, please realize that we have to use a protector with the same keys and the same purpose string in order to be able to actually unprotect this protected text that we have here that was protected with this protector that was configured with this purpose string. All right. So now let me say return type results dot OK. And let me say new anonymous object. And I want to pass here the plain text, the protected text, and then the unprotected text. 
All right, so we can press Control F5 to run our application. Here we have it in the console. I can press Control click here and let's come here and we can say encrypt and let me say Felipe. And as you can see, we have this here. Now, I prefer to use Postman for these examples because it is easier to see. So let's use Postman, send, and we have the same thing here. So as you can see, we have plain text, Felipe. Then we have the protected text, which as you can see, it is an undecipherable version of this plain text that we have here. And notice something, notice that if we click on send several times, you are going to see that we always get a new value. This means that you have an added protection layer when using that data protection API because they use good practices in which that for the same plain text, we get back different protected tests, which means that even if you get, even if you decipher this protected text that we have here, you cannot automatically know that this other text that we have here corresponds to the same plain text, which is great. All right, so then after that, we have that unprotected text, which is the plain text that comes from this protected text that we have here. All right, so this was the first and simple example. I want now to show you a second example in which we're going to implement a token validation system that does not use a database. That is, for example, when you want to confirm your account when you are registering in a website or when you want to reset your password, you typically get sent a URL to your email account. And then in that URL, there is a token, a token that we have to validate. So the idea is that when you click on the URL, you are going to get redirected back to the website and the website is going to validate the token to confirm the operation. Now that is great, but how can we implement that actually? One way would be to store the token in the database and then when the user comes back to the website, we get a token from the URL, match it against the one that is in the URL and see if they match. And then if they match, then the operation was successful. If they don't match, then we just do not confirm the operation. Now that is fine. That is a fine implementation, but there is a problem that is not scalable because for every try, you have to go to the database, do a query and use resources. That is not intelligent. There is a better way to do that. And that is by using encryption. Let's see that. Let's come to, let's come here and let's create two new endpoints. We're going to create one endpoint for generating a token and then another endpoint for validating the token. Let's see. Let me say here, app map get, let's say generate token. And then in here, I will receive again the iData protection provider, data protection provider let me as always just put this here so that we don't have any errors here i also need the http context because i want to generate a link to my web api and also a link generator service so i'll name it linker all right let me put this in another line so that you can visualize everything better so let's come here and first i need the data protector so let me say protector equal to data protection provider, create protector. Again, as it is a good practice, since these two protectors have different purposes, I'm going to give them different purpose strings. So let me say here, token. And then something that I want to do is that I want to only accept a specific token in a time window. For example, if I generate a token now, then the user can only use it for the next six hours or 12 hours or something like that. So let me say here for that two time limited data protector so that we can use that functionality of only allowing the token to be decipherable by a certain amount of time. So let me say here plain text. I'm going to generate a random string. I can use a git for that new git to a string. All right. Now let me generate a token. So let me say protector protect. And then we're going to pass here the plain text comma lifetime. And the lifetime of this token can be, for example, as I said before, it can be from hours, for example, six hours so that the user only has 
six hours to unprotect this token. Now, of course, this is a tutorial and therefore I'm not going to wait six hours for this. So let me just say, as an example, from seconds and I will say 10 seconds, which is fine for our use case. All right, so now I want to generate a URL to another endpoint. So let me first create that endpoint map get, I'll call it validate token and I'm going to receive that token here. Then I want to say here a string token, I data protection provider, data protection provider. All right, so this like this is fine. And then first I want to generate my protector with the same token because I want to unprotect a token that was created here. Then if I try to unprotect an invalid token, I'm going to get a cryptographic exception. So what we're going to do is that we're going to do here a try catch. So we're going to say try protector on protect. Then I'm going to pass the token. And then if this was successful, then we're going to run this line of code. So let me say here, type results. Okay. And then I will just say the token is valid. Now, if I come here and I get a cryptographic exception, then we can deduce that the token was invalid and therefore maybe it was expired. So let me say here, return type results, but here I will do a bad request and then I will say that token was not valid. All right, so now I need to put here results. I need to indicate, I want to say that I want to return an okay that has a, a string inside and a bad request with a, a string also. All right, so as you can see now this compiles. Now I want to give this a name with name. I can just call it validate token. All right, and now let's come here and let's generate that URL with the token to this endpoint that we have here. For that we can say linker, this linker, get URI by name, HTTP, the HTTP context, endpoint name, validate token, and values, the token. And then return, type results, okay, URL. All right, and with this we're good to go. Let's test our implementation. Control Shift V to compile our application. Let's come back to Postman. I will use this generate token endpoint first. So let me copy this. Let's come here and let me say generate token, control enter, click on here, send. And as you can see, we have back a 200 OK, a 200 OK, that token is valid. Now, more than 10 seconds has passed since I generated the token. And therefore, if I click on send one more time, oh, as you can see now, that token was not valid because the token expired. Notice that we implemented this functionality without having to touch a database, which means that now our solution is more scalable, is way more efficient than if we try to actually connect to a database to then validate the token. All right, so as you can see, with the data protection API, we can do encryption in an easy manner in Esperonet Core. Thank you so much.